Hello, hello. Happy Sunday, everyone. If you're tuning in for the very first time, my name is Kim Dent. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I've been a demonstrator for 23 years. I live in Maryland Heights, Missouri, and I love teaching stampers and crafters how to make quick and easy and adorable greeting cards. If you found me on my YouTube channel, Stamping with Kim Dent, please say hello, leave a comment. Um, if you would be so kind to hit that like button and also to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I also love finding out how far my videos have reached. So if you'd like to share with me where you are viewing from, where you live, I would enjoy that also. Hello, hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I have some beautiful cards to share with all of you, but they're easy cards and I'm going to demonstrate one of them tonight. Um, but before I get started, let me sync my laptop. Hopefully everything will go smoothly. Say hello if you're watching live. And we're almost there, girls. There we go. Here we go. Hello, Roberta. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mary Teal. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Sandy. We missed you guys yesterday. Um, I started to say I have um, my cards from my stamp class. Every month at Zion Lutheran Church in Maryland Heights, Missouri, I hold a monthly stamp class. Um, I, I hold actually three. One on the second Friday. It starts at 6 p.m. Um, and then two on Saturday, one at 9 a.m. And then uh, the afternoon class begins at 1 p.m. We stamp five cards. Um, the first time you come, you're absolutely free. Whether you've never stamped before or you've stamped for years and years, you'll be able to jump right in and fit right in and um, stamp and go home with five um, wonderful cards to show to your friends and share with your friends and put in the mail. That's something that I need to work on. <laughs> Hello, Jill. Hello, hello, everyone. So if you're interested in coming to an in-person class, um, please leave a comment. I'd be happy to comment. Uh, I'd be ha happy to contact you if you leave a comment. Um, Zion Lutheran Church, which also has a delightful coffee shop called Higher Grounds, is a quarter mile east of 270 in Maryland Heights, Missouri. So um, if you're interested, please um, please say hello and um, let me know that you'd like more information about my stamp classes. Next month's classes are October 11th and 12th, and our November classes are the 15th and 16th. So after you, um, after you contact me, you're also uh, welcome to enjoy invite some of your friends if you'd like a buddy to come and stamp with you. Um, Friday night and Saturday mornings are my busiest, fullest classes. Saturday afternoon, it's very peaceful. We have a lower attendance, so that's why I'm um, publicizing this tonight. Um, usually, I think yesterday we had um, 16 stampers at the afternoon class. So if you're interested in coming to one of my classes, I would recommend Saturday afternoon if you're able to attend that one. But you're always welcome at any of the three classes if you're interested in coming to learn how to make cards. So hello, everyone. Hello, Valerie. Hello, everyone. All right, let me, I'm all synced up. And now I'm gonna spin my laptop around and get my camera in place. All right, whoops. There we go. All right. All the technical things. All right. Um, if you are interested in finding out more about me or when my classes are, um, this is where you would want to go. This is my online store. This is my website, kimdent.stampinup.net. If you're interested in placing an order, this is the code if your order is $149.99 or less. If would you, this is called my host code. And um, if you would use this, if it's $149.99 or less, but if your order is $150 or more, do not use this code because you will receive the um, Stampin' Rewards, which is always fun to get free merchandise. 
All right. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is we are one week away from my third annual Stampin' Up! sale. I talked about this all weekend long, and I'm going to continue talking about it. If you love um, a bargain, this, and you love Stampin' Up!, which I know all of you who are watching love Stampin' Up! just as much as I do, next Saturday at um, Zion Lutheran, at um, Zion Lutheran Church Higher Grounds, we are having our third annual Stampin' Up! sale, and it is amazing. The first two have been fantastic. Um, we will have at this sale 18 tables filled with deeply, deeply discounted um, Stampin' Up! merchandise, along with other um, crafty items, I want to say, along with other stamp companies and other crafty items. Um, the, all the items that you'll see at this sale are um, retired Stampin' Up! products. We're all demonstrators who have tables at the sale. And so all of the merchandise that we will be selling is is retired. That's one of the rules we have to abide by with Stampin' Up! Um, but I, I talked about this and I wanna um, remind all of you, not all of us, not all the demonstrators um, who are participating in the sale, but some of them, we start at 7 a.m. And at noon, um, some of us will be going half price. So it's not only deeply discounted, but then at 12 noon, we have stampers who um, hang around just so they can hit that 12 noon hour. And then we mark our merchandise half price. So I hope all of you can make it. I hope you can tell your friends. Um, and I hope I get to see you next Saturday, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. The next thing I wanna talk about is World Card Making Day is October 5th, and um, Stampin' Up! is putting on another virtual event this year. It is a virtual event. It's from 2 to 3 p.m., and I want to remind all... Uh, I shouldn't be saying this. It's it's 2 to 3 p.m. <laughs> Not that I shouldn't be saying it. Mountain Time, but that we are Central Standard Time, so this would be 3 to 4 p.m. our time on October 5th. If you register for this free event, you can start, um, you can use this QR code. Well, let's see, I don't know if you can scan it from this, but if you go to stampinup.com, you should be able to um, pick up the World Card Making Day virtual event. It's just a one hour event where you get to see um, demonstrators um, put together some crafty projects. It's just a fun thing to do. It's especially fun um, because you're sitting there, you can craft along with them or you can just watch. And then I believe on October 8th, if I, our sweet little Vera's first birthday, it, birthday party is on October 5th. So I will not be watching live, but on October 8th, um, the, the, they will release the recorded um, World Card Making Day um, virtual events. So I will be watching it recorded a couple days later. And can you all believe if you've been watching me for a while, our sweet little baby is going to be one on October 6th. Didn't the year fly by? Oh my goodness. It just is amazing. All right. Paper pumpkin. This is something that I am, um, I love talking about. Paper Pumpkin is a monthly subscription, and I have gotten it, I almost think, not quite the whole time that we've been selling Paper Pumpkins, but almost the whole time. And it's a monthly subscription. This sweet box comes to your door, or comes to your mailbox. It's filled with everything you need to make um, crafty projects. Usually it's cards, but I know in November it's not going to be cards. But for um, the month from now till October 10th, if you've never subscribed to Paper Pumpkin, you can get 40% off your first month. And the thing that I'm most excited about is they don't let us know. It's just like a magazine subscription. They uh, Stampin' Up! does not let us know exactly what's going to be in the kit, but I compared it to a magazine subscription. And it's just like if you would sign up to get People Magazine or Better Homes and Gardens or, gosh, I can't even think of any. I used to get a bunch of magazines. Let's say People. Every month you don't know what's going to be in People Magazine. You just know that you like People Magazine. And that's the same thing with Paper Pumpkin. Um, Paper Pumpkin, the projects are always... Um, 
there's always an ink pad, there's a stamp set that you can use after you're done making these projects. There's always embellishments left over um, that I can use on my cards, my own cards. But um, I'm very excited because I can tell this paper pumpkin kit, which will come out in October, um, that's 40% off if you've never um, subscribe. It coordinates with our winterly trees um, suite that is in our annual, or, I'm sorry, in our mini catalog, and I adore it. I love these birds. I love the whole suite. So this paper pumpkin will coordinate with that. All right, that's all I've got as far as um, stamping up news. I'm going to show you now the cards that we made. The first one, I talked about this one. Oh, and let me get its partner. So this card, these cards were very easy to make and I had to laugh because um, I told the, the stampers on Friday and Saturday, this was cut out of scrapbook paper, the DSP to market. And I thought this makes, I think I got the idea from Patty Bennett, who's out of California, an amazing Stampin' Up! demonstrator. This um, pay, this suite to market, when I first opened up the annual catalog and I thought, who would want a stamp set that has lettuce and tomatoes and turnips and carrots and like a grocery sack? Um, it just didn't appeal to me. But then old Patty, I saw her idea on Pinterest where she took this paper. This is one of the sheets of the paper, which I should have it here. See, it's not at my fingertips, but look in your catalogs. It's in the beginning for the two market. And um, she just took the DSP and cut out the flower bouquets. There's also a real red bouquet. And then I think I switched it up a little bit. My tag that I used, which is a, it's a wonderful set of dies, is called Greetings of the Season. They're tags and under, under here, under this little twine bow, there's a hole. And, but I, I think it's a great set. I do make tags occasionally at Christmas time, but I got the die set because it is fantastic shapes. And I'll show you another one in my next card. Um, so this is from Greetings of the Season. This is from To Market. This is um, Dashing Designs 3D embossing folder, a little bit of twine and some embellishments. Isn't that sweet? No words on the front, no stamping. How about that? Hello, Murph. Hello. Thanks for joining. All right. The next card that I want to show you also uses greetings of the season. Dies. So this amazing die, this little chunky tag. Isn't that great? The stamp set is called Scenic Pumpkin. It's also an online exclusive. The embossing folder that I used is Simply Plaid. That's one of our new ones. And it's, it's wonderful. I, I love it. I love that it's a it's a huge folder. It's almost as big as our um, stamp and cut platform, um, so it it can emboss very large pieces of cardstock. And then we stamped um, we stamped these sweet little pumpkins. We actually I shared a tech a masking technique where you would stamp the pumpkins, and then we created a mask out of Stampin' Up's mask paper. We put it over the pumpkins, and then when we inked up our stamp, our grass or our ground stamp, I didn't have to worry about like the green getting, you know, halfway through the middle of it. So you put like this, po think post-it note, you put that over the, the image that you want to protect and then you stamp this. So see how nicely I got up and around that, those pumpkins. And then you peel off the post-it note or the stamp and mask and paper. And then it just lines up very nicely like that. And then I love this this ribbon. This is ribbon that is in our annual catalog. Um, the vanilla, black and vanilla checked ribbon. Ugh, isn't it good? And then those wonderful embellishments, which right now I can't think of the name of them, but they're in the annual catalog. And then happy birthday. This is from Unbounded Love, which is in the annual catalog. I use this stamp a lot. Hello, Chris. Hello, hello. Thanks for tuning in tonight. All right. This one, I definitely had a fall uh, fall feel to the cards, some of the cards that we made. This one is made um, with a stamp set. Just It's a single stamp set in the uh, mini catalog called Caring Leaves. Look how easy this was to make. So three little leaves and then a little twine bow. 
This Happiest of Birthdays, that's actually from a stamp set that was is called throughout the year and it's retired, but I thought it looked so nice right here. So that's a retired stamps stamp set, but it's a wonderful one if you get your hands on one. And then my favorite part about this, these are um, a, this is a product I have not used before. These these are called the embellishments are called faux glass gems, I believe, and they're in the annual catalog. And there you can see I used a coppery looking one or Cajun craze, and then this one is like a in the daffodil delight or crushed curry. So that idea I got from. Um, off of Instagram. Um, I love her style. Her name is Jamie. I want to say her name is Babarzik. Um, she's she's wonderful. So that was that was her creation that I kind of tweaked a little bit. And then this one, I got the idea off of Pinterest and now I can't remember who the name of the demonstrator, but I'll have to look her up. I changed it just a little bit. This is a monochromatic um, card. This is uh, the die is thought used from the Thoughtful Wishes suite. So see that intricate die. I want to share with all of you. We had I think I had about seventy five stampers this past weekend between the three classes, and um, you've got to do this if you've got intricate dies. We used wax paper. So um, when all of us were running the, this little intricate die through the stamp and cut and emboss machine, we took and we put the, um, you would have your platform on the stamp and cut, cut and emboss machine, and then you would have your shim and then a plate. You never want to cut directly onto your shim. So we had the plate, then I laid down, we laid down the white cardstock, but in between the cardstock and the the intricate die, we put a piece of wax paper. And the this, you know how sometimes we have trouble with getting these to pop out? They pop, it came out like butter. So I highly recommend not just this die set, if you love this or you have it, but any intricate die, use wax paper. It just makes the whole experience so much easier. Um, you might have to use like your, take your pick tool to poke at it a little bit, but we all of those uh, stampers this weekend, they were just amazed at how nicely that um, that die popped out without any trouble. This die is from Unbounded Love Again, as well as the um, Word Celebrate. And then the DSP is Country Lace, and then those three sweet little pearls on there. And we stamped, you can see the background, that's a little bit of basic beige. So it kind of has a green tone to it, but um, I, I love it. I love the way this looks. It, that kind of filled up the background without it just having the, um, the dye there. And basic beige stampers, this is a color that you've got to have. I, I can't, I'm, I'm amazed at how much how much of this, how many packs of this I've gone through. So basic beige, it's a great neutral that you can use with so many different colors. And then this one, I thought if so, in my head, I started second guessing myself and I thought, what if they think this is too boring? <laughs> Even though it's tone on tone, I think it's very simple and simple and elegant. But there I added another piece of um, the Country Lace DSP. And oh, one more tip I wanna give. So this die, we cut out of this large white layer, the center of it, and then this die, we cut out of the center of this white layer, that white layer right there, so that we saved, I didn't have to cut like extra pieces for people to cut this die and this die. So that's just a paper saving tip I like to share with all of you. And then there's a little piece of basic beige ribbon. And then the last card that we made at class, this is the one I'm gonna to demonstrate tonight, but I have some fun tips to share. So um, this is the last last card. This is the fifth card that we made. This is with the stamp and die set Autumn Leaves. And then the embossing folder is with the Distress Tile 3D embossing folder. And then um, the embellish, Oh, look how nicely my nails look against it. <laughs> the embellishments are the metallic adhesive back, um, what are they called, gems or dots? I'll pull it out when we're, it's, they actually come in copper, 
gold and silver. They're very pretty. And then this thinking of you, I'll show you the die set also because it's wonderful. I love the stamp set, but I really love the die set. And then this thinking of you is from Simply Said. So that is the card that I'm going to demonstrate for all of you. But I also, um, I'm, I decided as I was playing here today that I'm going to, I kicked it up a notch. So can you tell the difference with this one? I think you can. I can tell it on my camera. So as I was playing down here today and I thought, oh, copper embossing powder would look really pretty with this. And then I've never done this before. I just, well, I'll show you. I took my Versamark pad and just smushed it all over this piece that was embossed, the Distress Tile. And um, I love the effect of it. I love, this is the one I'm going to show you tonight. And I also em embossed the Thinking of You in copper. And I'm going to show you the embossing powder. I also did this one. This one, the entire leaf is embossed with our, our new copper embossing powder. Um, this one, I liked it, but I think I like, well, I don't know. It's be I do think it's beautiful. I just wasn't as happy with this one as I was. I really like the way this one looks with the um, with the embossing powder on the distress tile. So let's get started. I'm going to demonstrate this one. I hope you like it. I hope you. Who loves fall? I am ready for fall. Uh, we had like here in St. Louis a little bit a a taste of fall, um, and it's coming. I can look out my front. Uh, living room window and there's a tr beautiful tree right across in the neighbor's yard and it is gorgeous it looks um, there are so many different colors in it but I'm really ready for fall to set in and get the fall weather in I love I love the fall I love the fall temps I am not a, a fan of hot temperatures <laughs> and I'm not really crazy about cold temperatures either but Christmas Christmas is definitely my favorite season so here we go. The card base is Cajun Craze, five and a half by eight and a half, and I'm we're I've already scored it at four and one fourth. So there's your card base. The next layer is copper clay, and it is four inches by five and one fourth. And then for your inside, four by five and one fourth. Um, for your layer that you're going to stamp on. This is three by three and three fourths. And then a layer of early espresso. This is three and one fourth by four. And this piece, this is what um, the die, which I need to show you. This piece is what I cut the label die from. This is basic white and it is one and three fourths by three and three fourths. So if you would like to take a picture or a snapshot, you're ready for fall too. Thank you, Mary. I am going to talk. I'm going to show you the embossing powder now because it is, um, well, let, first let me show you the, the stamp set. First I'll show it. I'll show you the die set in the catalog. It is, this, this bundle has been in our catalog before. So you'll find it on page 74 um, there it is autumn leaves and let's see the stamp set is $24 and the dies are $38 and this was inspired by um, the million dollar sales achiever Amy Kunders um, so she must love fall too I bet let me show you the stamp set and die set up close and personal. Whoop. There it is. Let's see, 12 stamps. And I love, this is, look at these teeny tiny little words. For all you do today and every day to have you as a friend um, with a grateful heart, I'm thankful. And then this one, Autumn teaches us that change can be beautiful. It's just a really nice set. And the die set, These are two label dies that I use a lot. Also, aren't these little leaves fun? I used these last year in a class, and I think I made the card we made, it was just with the um, small leaf dies. But this is texture right here. 
this teeny little die right here that's for those teeny tiny little words and then this is another texture um, it looks like stitching when you put it when you run it through on your cardstock so it doesn't cut either does this one it just leaves like stitch marks so there is oh and then um, for those of you who have asked me before these magnetic um, sheets I get from Stampin Storage but I know my friends have done all sorts of creative things I think you can find these on Amazon and I also think um, I know some of my girls on my team have um, gone to home, like uh, Home Depot <clears throat> or Lowe's and bought magnetic vent covers and then cut them down to like five by seven so that they fit nicely inside of their stamp cases. So that's my little tip there. All right, now to the embossing powders. So Stampin' Up! this year went with a new company um, and our embossing powders are now called Wow Embossing Powders. The set that I pulled the copper embossing um, powder from is from the Metallics, 165678. So you get gold and silver, and then, where is it floating around here? Also copper, and now where is it? Oh, oh my right in my pan. <laughs> right in front of my eyes there you go so I don't think you can probably tell there's copper silver and gold um, this is just it's a new company I um, am NOT finding too much of a difference from our old embossing powder um, but I certainly have had fun I have had fun using I think I've used gold so far and then copper I used a bunch today and then there's an, a basic set so you get three of those I believe they're $18 and then there's a basic set which is um, black opaque white and then clear gloss so black opaque white and clear gloss so there's two, those are our embossing powders right now that we carry but uh, today I'm going to use the copper so let me let's see we're going to set this aside pull this back I'm going to bring in my bone folder I've already scored it. I'll set that aside. And I'm going to bring in my copper clay piece that was four by five and one fourth. I've already embossed that with the distress tile. So there's our, um, there's our embossing folder. It is a 3D embossing folder. So when you're using your stamp and cut and emboss machine or your Sizzix um, Big Shot, what, with the 3D embossing folders, we you just need a um, the platform, the the embossing folder with the card stock, stock inside, and then that thick um, gray plate. For us, it's the gray plate, but I know we used to carry for with the Big Shot. It was a clear blue plate, and that's all you need to run these through. Remember when you run your embossing folder through your machine, you always want to have the seam. Of the embossing folder going in first and then another th nice thing that Stampin' Up! does this line is a nice visual way to especially if there's a distinct pattern I put in my cardstock like this and to make sure it's even I think you can see I pull it down so it's right by that black line so sometimes it doesn't matter. I don't know that it would have mattered too much with this pattern, but like with that plaid that we, I had on the pumpkin card, it would have mattered. So um, that's a nice visual thing that I use. All right, I'm going to bring in, here's my little kit. There's my little pan um, where I use for embossing. Here, I'm not going to use, we usually like if, well, on. For, um, for this piece, I'm not going to use my embossing bot buddy because it's going to be random where the embossing powder goes. I'm going to bring in the Versamark. I'll use it, though, on the label, the Thinking of You. And I think I'm going to bring in my a little grid paper because I don't want it to go all over. So there you go. It looks like that. All I did was I took my Versamark, and for those of you who are new, this is like 
the glue that makes the powder stick to it so that I can heat it up and melt it. So I just did like that. Let's see, I think I've hit, and like I said, this is random. Each one that we do like this would be different. Um, you're never going to get like exact on them. And then I'm going to lay it into my little pan here. And I'm going to take my wow and copper embossing powder and I'm just going to pour it all over like this. <laughs> now the nice part about it, the reason if you're new, the reason that I'm doing it like in this pan is that it's going to catch all the excess. so that when I'm done, I can pour the remains into back into that little container. All right, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, oh, set my powder to the side, because this heat gun, it's just as amazing how powerful it is. Last time I embossed, I had, I think, um, Bar Barb, our, my friend Barb, she was like, get some tweezers in there when you emboss. I got some tweezers, Barb, but I don't know if it's going to help very much. Let's see. All right, here's my heat tool. And this I've had for a very long time. So I would highly recommend if you love embossing to uh, get yourself one of our Stampin' Up! heat tools. And then the magic begins when... It warms up and then I'm going to pull it close to the screen so I'm sorry for the the um, the noise of the heat tool but I want you all to see how beautiful this is when it starts to melt the powder like that it just it's fascinating I've been dem or I've been a demonstrator for 23 years I've been um, stamping I want to say for like 24 almost 25 years and every time I emboss, I'm still like amazed at how, how pretty it is. This is, I want to say, probably the biggest pieces that I've ever embossed. I don't ever recall doing something like this. Isn't that beautiful? almost there the one thing about embossing is you do have to make sure and I always say that's why it's nice to have a well lit area when you're embossing because you want to make sure that all of the area is melted if you don't get that powder melted then what happens when you pick it up it just flakes off and creates a mess so there, isn't that pretty? Who loves this? I, I do, I do. <laughs> I just am like, oh, I just love that. I'm going to be doing this, I think, with a bunch of different cards, trying to figure out a way to use that technique, um, maybe with the gold or the silver on different cards. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to bring in, I'm going to set that to the side, and I'm going to bring in my mini Stampin' Cut emboss machine. It sits right here. And I'm going to cut out the um, label die, which is in here. I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Don't All right. So we've got our number one plate, our number two plate. And let me grab that little piece of cardstock. So this, I'm going to cut the die. Someone yes or yeah yesterday asked me would do you do you stamp is it easier to stamp and then um, and then cut out the die or I don't know for me I think I go back and forth I think it just depends um, so with this I cut the die out I cut the label out first and then I'm gonna we're gonna emboss. Thanks, Jill. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks for watching tonight. All right. Going to... Where's my little metal dish? 
right here. All right. Oh, what is that? All right. Looks like a little piece of it. These are, um, i got a little something something right there. I don't know if you all can see that. Let me see if I can bring down my camera. No, I think my camera's down as far as it's going to go. This is a sand eraser. I don't know what that is. I got these. Um, I've got a bunch of these. I have them when we stamp at class. These are um, mono sand erasers by Tombow for ink. For ink. These are amazing. Like you ever get a little something, little blurb, little fingerprint. If you get on it right away with the sand eraser, and these are very inexpensive, it'll take out that little boo-boo. So with this one, I am going to use my um, embossing buddy. And this embossing buddy is like a cornstarch kind of feel to it and it just um, makes it so that the um, embo I'm losing my words embossing powder sticks to where we put it and doesn't pick up like from static electricity a little sp little spots all over the place so I'm gonna bring in back bring in my Versamark and then oh with this one I forgot to show you the stamp set and now I used Simply Said, which is a stamp set that is in the beginning of the annual catalog. And now it must be in another container. But this Thinking of You, that's where it's from. And I told uh, the girls, I, was, I, the, I have men and women who come to my stamp classes, so I told the stampers, um, Thinking of You can be used for so many different reasons like thinking of you because you don't feel good, thinking of you because you're sad, thinking of you and on the inside it could have happy birthday. So thinking of you is a great, great stamp to use on your cards if you're not sure what you wanna use the card for. Okay, now I'm just gonna dip that back in. Oop, and I can see on the G, I didn't get it, so I can dip it back in there and then I want to show you let's see if I can find it this is something a dem no that's not it either where is it I have a friend share with me she keeps it here it is watch this girls so can you I don't know if you can see it right see those little bitty flecks where I must not have hit it with the embossing buddy I had a friend a long time ago she told me she keeps a tiny little paintbrush see how tiny it is next to her stamp table and then whenever she embosses and if she gets those tiny little flecks she just takes this it's it's the best just get yourself a cheap little paintbrush and keep it next to your I have mine like in a little basket over here so all right set this to the side get that embossing powder out of the way we're gonna emboss one more time and I didn't grab the tweezers this time. All right, you know, it kind of looks like it's a little crookedy. Ugh. Well, we're going to go on with the show. All right, so we've got our label, we've got our background, and now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in our basic white, and it's three by three and three fourths, and then we're going to bring in copper clay and the big leaf. And because this is a larger stamp, I like to take it, set my stamp down. Let me pull this over a little bit. And I'm gonna, um, instead of putting the stamp onto the ink pad, I take the ink pad and put it onto the stamp. And ink it up that way and I can see exactly where it's going. And I just see I've got a little something right there. There we go, let me do this again. All right, and then, oh my goodness girls. Let me flip it over. Do you see my fingerprint? Nah. Lay it on there. Give it a nice hard push, but don't wiggle it. There you go. 
and then I'm going to bring in my stem. We're going to do that in early espresso. Yes, you're right. I see. I didn't see them, Jill. Here they are. <laughs> they got underneath the grid paper. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to put the the ink pad to the stamp instead of the other way around. It's just an easy way where you can see exactly where your 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 you can make sure that the stamp is completely inked up that way. Okay. Uh, well, that's a little light, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Now, this uh, piece. Oh, I, I want to share another technique. This is something um, I learned from a long time ago from uh, Dina Rikau. And she's another one of our amazing demonstrators, Stampin' Up! demonstrators. She likes to do this a lot. Um, and I don't know what she calls it. I call it um, flecking. Flecking. So you take your Stampin' Right marker. I also found you can do this with your um, blends, if you would like. And you take off uh, the lid on the brush tip end. This is the color we used yesterday, I think, or this weekend was Cajun Craze. This is Copper Clay. So it still coordinates and you just take it and you want to make sure that nothing is around because you can't really control the um, where the spray of the of the marker goes. But it's just a fun way to add a little bit into your background so that it's not just plain plain white or plain. So it's got just got a little bit of speckling on there. All right, there's that. And now we're going to take this and we're going to glue it to the early espresso, which was three and one fourth by four. And then let me get my card base. Now you can see, like, see, because we've embossed it, this is going to take a little bit of extra adhesive. Also, with um, if you use stamp and seal like I do, I can use this on here. Let's see what happens. Sometimes stamp and seal gets a little temperamental with um, embossed pieces of cardstock, but I'm going pretty slow. I think on my my uh, sample, I used my glue, but it took a little bit of extra glue, so. Let's see what happens because I want to make sure I, d I don't want that warped look. I want it to lay down nice and flat. So let's see. Oh, I can see it's pop okay. See, it's popping up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little precision glue and just put it under there and hold it down, little press. And then the same thing on this side put a little extra, I didn't get right up against the edge, I guess, and then a little press. Oh, there's one more. That little precision, that glue, it just goes right up in there. It's so nice. All right, now this I'm going to um, take my, oh my goodness, where did it go? Where did I put it? Here it is. Tossed it to the side. Stamp and seal right there. We're almost there. And then I'm going to take um, the thinking of you and I'm going to pop it up with dimensionals. So and I always use, and I know I use a lot of dimensionals, but I really when I'm embossing, I always use extra if I'm going to pop something up. It just, you can kind of see there's a little bit of, I don't know, warping to it. And probably that will settle down, but for right now, I'm using four. <laughs> so let's put that right there. And then we're going to bring in our metallic, what are they called? They're called adhesive back metallic gems. 
And I'm going to bring in my take your pick tool. I had it. <laughs> there it is. And I'm going to use copper. So cop silver, gold, and copper. One there. One there. These are very pretty. And I think the silver and gold I'm really going to get a lot of use out of with um, Christmas, Christmas cards. So there's that. And then, let's see, for the inside, I'm going to bring in um, this stamp set, which is called Layering Leaves. It's in the catalog. It has a coordinating punch. So for my thinking of you, I think I'm going to put Sending Hugs. Does that sound good? And that can just be for some sweet girlfriend that maybe needs to know that I'm thinking of her. All right, this is my inside piece. And should I put a leaf? Let's see. I think I am. Oh, I'm just going to do the tip, I think. Mm, yeah. Well, I don't know. It's so big. I wish it was a little smaller for the inside, but here we go. And then a stem. So pretty. Well, it kind of went out of the lines, but that's okay. And that is it. Sending hugs, thinking of, oh, no, it's not. One more thing, girls. Oh, my goodness. And now, of course, let's see. Where did it go? Well, on one of my cards, this is retired ribbon. Both of these are. I used this ribbon, which I think was came with like a craft um, burlap ribbon. It was a two-pack last year. This one is, I believe, Cinnamon Cider. Um, I'm just going to tie a sweet little knot bow, and I need a glue dot, and then I'll be done. <laughs> Take our mini glue dots and... Pull one of these off. Did you see it right there? It's a tiny little thing. There we go. Ta-da! I hope you like, if you were at stamp classes this weekend or not, I hope you like this card. Um, if you have any questions about any of the cards or about the products that I use with this card, just leave me a comment. Let me flip this around. I appreciate all of you tuning in tonight. And if you're watching live or on the replay, um, I appreciate you and also on my YouTube channel. If you're in the St. Louis area, don't forget to stop by um, our big stamp sale next Saturday, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. You won't regret it. You'll, I'm sure you'll walk away with a bag full of wonderfulness um, at deeply discounted prices. So have a wonderful week. God's blessings, everyone. Bye-bye.